Well, hello and welcome to this edition of Wisdom from the Field webinar series published by the Center for the Ministry of Teaching at Virginia Theological Seminary. Title of this session is Staying in Touch with Youth and Their Families, Communication Throughout the Program Year. And we're joined by Randall Curtis and Santi Rodriguez, whom I will introduce in a moment. My name is Matthew Kozlowski. You might see my window saying Sarah Stonecipher. She is my colleague at the Center for the Ministry of Teaching who set up the session here. But I am on staff here at VTS and really thrilled to be hosting this session. We are sponsored, as I said, by the CMT at VTS and Building Faith, which is our main website through which we communicate best practices for Christian formation for all ages, children, youth, and adults. We will start with a word of opening prayer. And so I invite you to sort of take a moment to center yourselves. This is a timely prayer for, uh, for the moment. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving God, lead us beyond ourselves to care and protect, to nourish and shape, to challenge and energize both the life and the world you have given us. God of light and God of darkness, God of conscience and God of courage, lead us through this time of spiritual confusion and public uncertainty. Lead us beyond fear, apathy, and defensiveness to new hope in you and to hearts full of faith. Amen. Our thanks to Joan Chittister who had that prayer. We always do a scripture reading as part of our webinar series, and this comes from Romans, and, and we just love the scripture reading, especially as it talks about being mutually encouraged in each other's faith, and what a powerful image for youth ministry. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed throughout the world. For God, whom I serve with my spirit by announcing the gospel of his Son, is my witness that without ceasing, I remember you always in my prayers, asking that by God's will, I may somehow at last succeed in coming to you. For I am longing to see you so that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, or rather that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. The word of the Lord. All right. Randall and Santi, if you can go ahead and say hi and where you're from, that will allow the audience to see your faces. I'll start. I'm uh, Randall Curtis. I am the ministry developer and evangelist uh, for Youth and Young Adult Ministries in the Episcopal Diocese of Arkansas. I've worked in youth ministry now for over uh, full time for over 20 years, and uh, um, I've been in uh, at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Kansas City, Missouri. In, uh, at Christ Church in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina, and at Grace St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Memphis, Tennessee in those years. And then the last 10 years have worked for the diocese where I travel with the bishop on Sundays and uh, meet with churches and help them with their, develop their youth programs, their young adult programs, and really um, kind of all areas to kind of see how I can be helpful and how the diocese can be helpful to them uh, at, the, at the parish level. Um, I've also been uh, involved with FORMA a whole lot, being the board, uh, on the FORMA board for uh, many years, uh, and uh, it seems like many years anyway, um, and uh, um, was the president for a couple of years, and now am uh, the uh, faculty coordinator and, and main coordinator for the Certificate of Youth and Family Ministry program that's, uh, that's ongoing right now, uh, and that I really enjoy doing. Uh, I also, uh, I, live in, I live here in Arkansas, my wife's a priest. Uh, daughter started her first day of school today, and uh, as it mentions, I have a whole lot of tortoises here, too. <laughs> Randall is an animal lover, and we are glad to have him with us today, and he brings with him a, a whole host of youth ministry experience. Turn it over to Santi Rodriguez. Santi, can you say hello and let folks know who you are and where you're ministering so that they can see and hear you, your, your face and your voice? That's great. So, buenas tardes. My name is Santiago Rodriguez. I'm the youth minister at Christ Church in Alexandria. I've been doing youth ministry 12 years, and uh, I've done youth ministry in Miami, Florida, done youth ministry in Santa Fe, New Mexico, Boston, Toronto, um, 
for a while in Milwaukee and now I'm here in Alexandria since last year. And throughout the years, it has always been my inspiration to come to bring the youth to know more about Christ, not just to, to know about Christ, but to know Christ. And that's the inspiration behind the ministry, the communications, and uh, together with my wife, you know, kind of just learning about the different ways in which communication is a way of deepening um, our relationship with, with Christ. And that's at the heart of everything that I, that I do. Uh, married, have a son who is eight, uh, who will start school in a couple of weeks, uh, and just really looking forward to this webinar with you. Sandy, we're so thrilled to have you with us, and um, you've been a good friend to the Center for the Ministry of Teaching, and um, we're just thrilled to be able to work with you today on this webinar. So let's get right to it. Um, sorry, those are the contacts. And these slides will be available through Building Faith. So if you want to go back at any time and check out these slides, check out uh, the presenter's contacts, you'll have that. The way we always do these webinars is to start with big picture, and then we narrow down by the end of it to start specific tools and strategies and things that you can use. And uh, I know folks often come to sessions like this saying, give me the tools, give me the resources, give me something I can use, and I promise we'll get there. But first, it's important to talk about some of the larger issues at play and get folks thinking about youth ministry from sort of a strategic point of view. And that's where I want to start. This question is for Santi. You know, when you talk about communication with youth and also with families versus the program, because we spend so much time in churches kind of creating program, tell us about how these two things, communication and program, work together and how you focus on, on both at the same time. Yeah, I think uh, just as you have it here in the slide, I think that communication and program are two sides of, of the same coin. I think that what's important to understand is what we want to do is to be intentional in the way we share, you know, the, the plans for the program, the events of the program, that we share it both with youth and with parents. But at the same time, that communication will allow us to have a better relationship with youth and parents. The way we will communicate the different parts of the program um, will be different. We use different channels, different platforms for that communication. But I think that the three things that always help me is to understand, one, what's the purpose, what's the intention of all communication? But the program and the communication at the end of the day is to help youth to be able to grow in their um, relationship with, with Christ and then with their own parents. Because um, the second thing is that um, I believe that parents are the first teachers. They're the first youth ministers. And so we want to have a good partnership with parents. Um, and so all communication um, needs to be able to, to, to honor that, that sense of partnership with the parents. And then the third thing is um, the intentionality of each channel. Uh, I've always believed that, that as, as you communicate what the program is all about, that, that we know what are the different channels that we're using, whether it is an Instagram or a newsletter or text messaging, or, and, and we'll get into detail about all these different ones, that so we know why we're using each one of those channels and which one allows us to be able to, to convey um, not only events and logistics, but, but what the program is all about. Yeah, and so I want to stop there for a second and ask another question for Santi and then also Randall. When you talk about program and having your youth ministry program that has a vision to it and has a mission to it, it that's kind of a first step here that, you know, before you can even talk about communication, you got to make sure that you and your team have a vision and a mission for the program. Can you say a word about that? Yeah, I'm always being inspired by leaders who, who begin with the why, you know, whether it is someone like Steve Jobs or, you know, many of the other one, wonderful leaders that I have learned from or about, they begin with the why. And so I have always asking myself the question, what's the one thing I want our youth to walk away with when they graduate, when they go to college or when they begin vocational training or they do something else with their lives? What's the one thing I want them to walk away with? And to me, it comes down to them having a sense of their own faith and how to live their faith in daily life. And so when I'm thinking of the program and the way I communicate with them, you know, I'm always thinking of what's the best way to get there. I was with, with that intention in mind, because yeah. if I know exactly what I want to accomplish, then all communication and all the different events and all the different parts of the program 
will, you know, will have a purpose and will have a reason to be. Yeah, and Randall, please jump in because you were just sharing with us the book called um, The Power of Why or uh, no, Start With Why. Um, yeah, you know, I, I echo a lot of what Santi is saying. Um, and, I, and some of what I'm saying is going gonna, is gonna to deal with the next slide too, I guess. But uh, one of the things that I, I, I do with every, with every church that I start working with in our diocese uh, and just recently finished it with uh, St. Thomas Episcopal Church in Springdale, Arkansas, is I, I, I have the church put together a group of people who are going to meet with me and um, for three months, who are going to meet once a month for three months, and really ask the question, why do we do youth ministry here at all? Um, you know, why, why do we do youth ministry? How is that different than other churches in town? Um, what are our specific goals? What are our specific strategies? Why, why are we doing this? And it's a group made up always of parents and of kids so that we, we really answer that as a community uh, and not as uh, just my own ministry of like, this is why I do this, but really asking them, you know, figure out why do we do this? And then to me, that's, that's really is step one uh, when it comes to communication is we have to know what it is we're trying to communicate. Um, it really is. I, as a, yeah. So, so yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go in further than I guess with my, my next bullet point. <laughs> well, Matthew, I think you're uh, muted. There we go. Okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to stay with you, Randall and ask about, you know, specifically when do you communicate with youth and when do you communicate with parents? Um, uh, well, I mean, all, all year round, all the time, of course. Uh, but specifically, I want to get across to parents and family uh, fam that I'm uh, I'm not just there for their teenagers. Um, I'm there for their families. For I'm, I'm there to support them, uh, and I'm support th them as the primary ministers. Uh, that you know, I'm in the end. If a in most of the churches I worked at, I had a, a Sunday evening youth group, and I had maybe a Sunday morning Sunday school group. Those were the two hours. That I would see your teenager in a week. Uh, maybe in the summer I do a mission trip also and see longer then. But uh, those parents um, see them 24-7. You know, they are uh, the people that are really going to affect and really going to uh, transform that child in, 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 in how their faith is and, and let them be models of that faith. So I always want to communicate with parents to let them know um, that I'm there for them also. And, and with that too, communicating with parents, let them know uh, why being a part of our ministry, why it is valuable to, to their youth's life. Um, this is particularly important to junior high who's, um, who are going to come to our programs because their parents have brought them there. You know, why is this a valuable thing uh, to your teenager's life that is just as or more valuable than being on a soccer team or being on a, uh, in, in other various clubs? You know, why is this valuable? To the teenager, um, communication also, I think, becomes more important of uh, really helping them um, schedule and figure out, you know, to figure out how things, uh, things that are going on, things that they can be involved with, how are they so, um, so good and so engaging. Uh, hopefully those things are so good and so engaging, those events, those programs, that they're actually going to be able to invite their friends to come to it too. So I want, um, I want messages and uh, I want uh, uh, communications that are easily shareable uh, for my broader announcements. Um, now that's uh, becomes different in how I communicate with youth uh, individually um, and how I build those relationships. And so, so I think that all goes on there, I guess. All right, Santi, over to you and Randall. That's exactly um, exactly the summary I was hoping for. Santi, over to you. When you're thinking about specific communication, what do you want to get to the kids and what do you want to get at the parents? Yeah, I think that when it comes to what I want to share with either one of them, I, I always divide things between uh, logistics. You know, I always remind uh, both parents and youth about events as far out as I can. You know, I could start at the very beginning of the year, even a month before the first event, I'll snail mail, you know, the full calendar of events because it helps and it works very well with youth because they love receiving something that is tangible and they can keep on their fridge or elsewhere and they can look at and then try to go beyond logistics and remind them of what are some of the major themes that we want to hit this year? What are the major um, issues that we want to work through? And then the last thing is, you know, highlight some of the fun, cool events that are going to 
help with that because if you want to tell them you know what's happening this year what are the themes you're working with and also i think that it helps when you offer them something that will be social and it will be at the same time that will help the programming and so as far out as you can to start communicating those things is important and, and those things i communicate with both youth and parents and i do it in different ways but the one thing that is different is that every single one of those communications leads to one-on-ones with parents and with youth. And I think that that's where most of the ministry happens. When I can go from, from an email or a text or when I can go from a communication on Instagram or elsewhere, and then that leads to a conversation in a parking lot or elsewhere in church um, with a youth or with a parent, I think that that's where the best communication happens because all communication, I hope, begins in a digital way or snail mail maybe, and then can lead to an analog conversation. And that's where the, the big communication really happens. Yeah, that's, that's tremendous. Um, and especially the way that communication switches from moment to moment. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that I don't think my face is popping up on everybody's screen when I speak, um, but you can be sure that I'm here and uh, <laughs> listen to my voice and check the slides. But you've segued perfectly, Santi, into the front-loading big communication. So this is very timely, okay? It's August. Uh, Randall said, you know, in the South that they uh, have started mm-hmm. uh, school already. And um, this is the time when churches uh, are sending out, you know, kind of information about the program year and households and couples and individuals and families are putting it together. So let's actually get specific on this question. If you were going to send out something this week, Randall, um, to let folks know that the youth ministry for church X, Y, and Z is starting off, you know, what would you be sending out to kind of like front load uh, at, right now? I want a, um, I, I, I tell my churches and I want, and I've done a, uh, an eight and a half by 11 single side sheet of paper or single side or double side paper. On one side, I want the calendar for the whole year. Um, I want the calendar for all the, the major events for things that are, are scheduled where I'm not going to cancel them. They are definitely going to happen. Um, and, a, a, a list of all of those on the back side of it. I want a, a half page, a half of that page to be a, a statement of why we do youth ministry. That statement mm-hmm. I mentioned earlier of why we do this at all. Um, and in the bottom half of that, probably a small bio about the, um, uh, and with contacts, if they're welcome, if they're if they're okay with that, a small bio and contacts of the uh, adults who are working with youth ministry in that church. And then I'm going to send that out not only to the uh, youth and the and to their parents, but I also want to mail that out to everyone in the parish. Actually, um, I want the parish to know that our youth ministry, our youth ministry, is is their youth ministry also. So this is uh, for me the, the beginning of the school year is the one time uh, that I'm going to. Uh, send this entire calendar out as, uh, and uh, and this the sheet I just mentioned. I'm gonna send that out to every member of the church. Um, I want them if you even if you don't have a teenager, uh, maybe you have a uh, 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 maybe you're older and have a child uh, who has teenagers, um, and this is the kind of thing where you'll say, oh, you know, we've got this youth program that you should see. You know, this is uh, to me that's uh, one of the big evangel evangelism moments for youth ministry is that communication. I'd also say too, as part of a big communication for front loading, um, I also ask all the churches to have a, um, if possible to have a meeting uh, for parents, uh, particularly focused on parents to let them see this big sheet of paper and see, and to kind of go over with them, like this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. Um, I really encourage churches to do that in such a way that it's, um, it's inviting and fun to people who have never been there before. So maybe it's someone's house and it's hors d'oeuvres and drinks and the kids have a room downstairs. They can drop them off, but the parents are upstairs. They can hear from the youth minister and meet the adults uh, who are, who are a part of that, that program that year. Um, I also always want the um, rector or if there's no rector, the, uh, um, the senior warden, junior warden of that church to be there also to show, you know, this is a big thing to us also. This is something that's really important to us. So um, that, that beginning of that big communication is really important. You mentioned the book too. Uh, uh, there's a book uh, by Simon Sinek, um, it's S-I-N-E-K, who's a really popular uh, speaker right now. You hear on NPR a lot. And he has some great, he's one of the biggest big TED Talk, TED talk watchers, TED Talk speakers. 
he, uh, his big thing is that too also, is on the front load, we start with why. Why are we doing this? And that when you look at the major uh, successful businesses that are going on right now, they start with why they're, why you should buy my product, not here is my product. Um, so anyway, that's, that's kind of where that, I say front loading and uh, the big communication there, I think that's one of the most important communications you're gonna do actually. So. All right, I love it. Uh, same question to Santi, if you were gonna send out information or communicate in some way this week, uh, getting ready for the program year, what would you do? So actually our communication to our snail mail um, letter is going out this weekend. So I try to connect with as many parents and youth as I can during um, August. Uh, many of them are coming back, school starting soon. So I will have many of them, you know, in, in the next couple of weeks and I will try to hand those uh, in person and just remind them of the events that are that are coming up. Um, mine is a bit similar to what Randall was describing. One page or the first um, page is a calendar of 12 events that are happening, the big 12 events that we're gonna have for junior high and senior high. And in the back, I have some themes that we're working on and a few details about Sunday school and a couple of things about why we're doing youth ministry. Um, if I haven't had a, a chance to connect with uh, parents in the next two weekends, then I will mail it in to make sure that by the first week of September, they have all the events because after Welcome Sunday, which here at Christ Church is September 10, then the next weekend, that's when we have our youth ministry kick up, which is the best time for you know families and many different members of the parish and the youth to come together. And that's a good place for them to learn more about the program, to meet some of the new youth leaders, to see some of the old ones, and to communicate more of what's happening throughout the entire year, whether it's retreats, whether it is diocesan events, whether, whether it is we have lock-ins, anything that is happening, it's a good way for, for communication. So to me, it's just hitting them in as many ways, seven different ways, uh, whether it's digital newsletter, snail mail, uh, in uh, in person, all the different ways we can so that they get the message that we care and we want to connect with them. I I'll say it. too, I want to say too, um, yeah. uh, you, you, Santi mentioned the snail mail a uh, good number of times and uh, um, so many of our churches have, uh, and youth ministries have decided that to, to, to leave snail mail, to go straight to email lists and email the problem. The problem that I see with that in so many churches too though, in so many ministries, is that they tend to only email the people who are active, who are um, active with their current program. Whereas at least here in the South, there are so many churches that um, for whatever reason, they haven't been coming to church lately. Um, they, they have stopped since their, their child has been in fourth, fifth or sixth grade. Um, that snail mail going out to everyone in your church database who has a, who has a teenager, um, that this is one of those times that needs to go out to everybody to see if there are people out there also who, who maybe haven't been active recently. And this could be the thing that really gets them back there. So yeah, you say it's that snail mail really does a big difference. Yeah. So dust off those databases and yeah. uh, get it out to everybody. All right, gang, this is a big topic next using digital communication with teens and honoring safe church guidelines while still providing trusted pathways for youth to share. I'm going to hold off on it because I want to get to some questions uh, at this time, we usually kind of take questions. And so we're going to do questions and then come back to that topic. So in the chat, please, uh, folks, what do you, what are you thinking? It can be a question, a comment, and uh, I'll read off the questions and then Randall or Santi will answer. Sure. So while that's <laughs> happening, uh, if I'm able to add something else about the snail mail thing, so uh, uh, something that is very important, if as a youth minister, you believe strongly in snail mail and you want to send something out you, and you want to send it to a wide number of people, um, you're going to have to talk to, uh, you know, your rector or somebody else who's in charge of membership and let them know why you're going to send it out. Because they sometimes they're going to ask you, I mean, it's pretty expensive. Why do we want to mail out all these different people? So as long as you come with a very specific reason and you give them the purpose for it, they'll understand, they'll back you up. Uh, and even if there's somebody from the, the vestry that could help with that as well, because sometimes you may get some resistance because of how um, costly it could be. Mm -hmm. How much did we spend on that? Mm -hmm. How much for postage? Yeah, exactly. All right, from Elizabeth Windsor. Question, how do we convince parents that they are the primary faith formers of their teens? 
I have parents who insist that it is our job. That is the job of the church. Mm-hmm. Well, I think um, that for me, that comes into uh, to being in a relationship with parents as much as possible. Um, to uh, uh, In the churches I worked in, I tried to uh, – at least once, um, at least once or twice a month, I tried to make sure I attended uh, youth sporting events, uh, football games, basketball games, concerts, choirs, and as much as I went there to see the teenager who was participating, I also went to sit in the bleachers next to a couple of mom and dads, uh, and really they kind of got to know me. I kind of got to know them. Um, when they started seeing me, kind of as part of their faith family, I'd say. Um, then it was easier for me to invite them to get into resources such as um, uh, various Lenten programs that were for the family. Um, I'd send out um, uh, everything from Lenten devotionals that were uh, a family could do together before dinner to um, uh, one church I brought back. The, uh, I, I offered out and got a good number of takers for the, um, an, advent, uh, an advent calendar that actually had little boxes you could open. So, uh, uh, so I think it, it, it begins there with relationships, I would say. Yeah. Um, let's then go ahead and hit on this issue of guidelines for communication. And, and we'll take a few minutes here because it's an important topic. When you're communicating with teens, how do you make sure that you're following safe church guidelines, whether it's through text, whether it's through email, whether it's um, through some of the other platforms that we're going to talk about. And Santi, let me start with you because you have a pretty, pretty vital ministry of texting and you've created some really sharp guidelines for yourself that parents and teens both know about in terms of the, the safe church guidelines with texting. Yeah, I do uh, do a number of things. I mean, to me, the most important thing is to be transparent and always honest with parents from the very beginning. And so at the very beginning of the year, so about three to two weeks before the, the year, every single one of the parents and the youth, they fill in a universal permission form. And as part of that, I always ask parents whether it's okay for me to text with mm-hmm. the youth for the sake of, of, of ministry. Um, and I was letting people know um, how the texting is done to know that, you know, texting is mostly um, about logistics and information, that all texts are always archived, nothing is ever deleted. And then, you know, beyond some guidelines that I have, I have a number of principles that help me um, inform parents and youth of why is it that I use text for, for ministry. Uh, I mean, to me, the most important thing is I was doing what's in the best interest of the youth. You know, I use texting because it is a medium that they use and because it is a, an easy way for me to be able to approach them, to connect with them. And also because most of those conversations uh, lead to one-on-ones um, of like conversations that are always very life-giving with the youth. Uh, and in more than 10 years of youth ministry, I've never had any major issues and I think it's because of important guidelines, but because I always follow um, some principles that help me to be transparent and accountable and open. And so let me just jump in, Sandy, because you were sharing this with me a little bit earlier. If at any point uh, a parent requests the record of the text, then you would be able to give that to them. That's right. So I always tell parents that all the information is always available, that all the text messages are always archived, and, and I back up all my, my text messages. Um, and the one thing that I tell parents is just give me, um, give me some time to have a conversation with uh, your son or daughter to let them know, because I always tell my youth there's no surprises. I will let you know anything that is coming your way, just to let youth know that Maybe the content of those conversations were pastoral and there are things that they haven't shared with their parents. So I was given the youth the time, the opportunity to talk to the parents directly before I share that information. Uh, because what I want is for parents and youth to have a thriving relationship. And if they can have that conversation beyond or before I share the content, um, it helps them. But I always, uh, I mean, in, in 10 years, that only has happened once. Most parents have trusted in the process uh, but I think what is important is to do what's in the best interest of the youth and the best interest of the families. 
And, um, and just to be crystal clear, you're, you're transparent up front, like you said, with both youth and parents. I mean, you tell, you're, you tell the teens that any texts between me and you um, are saved and, and it, upon request could be shared. Um, yeah, yeah. And then you're also clear with the parents about that. Yeah, all the youth know that there is yeah. no youth minister, you know, um, youth uh, privilege. I mean, anything that I have a conversation with them at the end of the day, uh, it's never fully private. I mean, I take their privacy uh, and the confidentiality very serious. Uh, but when it comes to, uh, to ministry, you know, I am accountable to parents. Yeah. And if a parent wants to know the content of those conversations, I can never keep it private for a number of reasons, many of which are legal. So you do know that that's the case, that I try to keep that as private and as confidential as I can. But if a parent asks for that, or if there's other reasons why I believe that for their own safety, I need to um, give information to parents, that will happen. But I will always let them know first, right. and I will only do it if I think that is it's necessary. Randall, we're going to turn over to you, but I just want to let folks know, Giselle, Kathy, Jamie, and Lucas, I got your questions, and we're going to come right back to them. Cool. So, Randall, go for it. Um, so, so I do things a little differently, partly because I'm a Dallas, I'm a Dallas youth minister now. Uh, when I was, uh, 10 years ago, when I was in parish ministry, I was, um, uh, texting wasn't as big of a thing, honestly, <laughs> then, so it wasn't as big of an issue. But, um, but I will say that now, um, I discourage youth from texting me directly to my phone, partly because I want to be able to have my own, like for me, text messages on my phone are, or what I do with my family, my work colleagues, um, my, the youth ministers, for instance, my diocese. But, um, when youth text me on my phone, I will typically, um, answer them back through one of the platforms that I'm gonna talk about later through group me or through, um, through uh, band now. Uh, through a platform that will kind of hold and save that information. Uh, now, for instance, I mean, but it still comes up definitely. Like if a teenager uh, texts me two nights before an event and says, hey, now, do I need to bring this to an event? I'm going to reply. Um, and uh, um, if, I mean, I'm going to re reply to a simple one. But if it becomes anything more, if they reply back, or even then I may just reply through uh, an, a, a platform like Band uh, that I mentioned earlier or, uh, or Group Me. Um, I'll try to kind of steer them towards that. And since I've been doing that for the past couple of years, uh, almost all the youth in the diocese uh, know that's the best way to start with me. That's, they, they, they just know the way I reach Randall is through band. The way I reach Randall is through uh, group me um, I, or even private messages through, um, through Facebook um, or private messages through Instagram. Um, and then Randall, let me just break in here. What are your kind of safe church guidelines then related to those platforms? Um, to those platforms, uh, one, everything there is saved and uh, everything is um, archived there. So that's why I use those platforms. I'll, I'll pick to use those platforms for, um, for groups and settings. I, I, I treat my digital communications and digital life as the same way I treat my uh, in-person groups. Uh, just like a, uh, any parent could walk into my youth group on a Sunday night um, and spend the day, spend the whole time in the youth group they wanted to. They can also join those um, and are invited to join those uh, uh, various um, groups that I do, Facebook groups or like this band group, a, a group texting group. I'm absolutely willing to let any parent join that also. Um, and sometimes I have some parents take me up on it. They'll do it for a little while and they drop out. Um, but for the most part, I mean, they all know it's accessible. They all know they can join. Um, so it's kind of a, an open room policy. I also make sure that in those group text, those group messaging systems that I always have at least one more adult who is uh, with me the whole time, uh, a youth minister or admin to that group also, so that just like in a, in a, in a live situation, I've got two adults in every room. So in, on a digital room or digital group, I've got at least two adults in that group also. I like it. Guys, uh, we've got two questions about the permission slips. Will you guys uh, share those um, through the resources? Do you have um, a sample one that you could share, a permission slip that you use for texting, and then like the guidelines? Yeah, I have no uh, issue doing that. I think the one that is important thing when it comes to permission forms is also to um, check with whoever does legal counsel for you. Right. 
Yeah, so to make it specific for your policies. For your policies, for your church, for your state. Uh, there are a number of questions that you're always going to ask. Uh, for example, we ask questions about healthcare and questions about you know health information. But um, the most important thing is that you begin with looking at what's specific to your church, to your state, what right. sort of legal questions you need to ask. Yeah, right. we, we didn't mention that too, that, that uh, a number of dioceses now have their own digital safeguarding God's children's policies. Okay. And so uh, make sure that as much as you're listening to us, make sure you're at least uh, checking on to see if your diocese already has some, they, they may, I, I know of a diocese or two that has rules, for example, that there, there's not supposed to be text communication between texting communication between an adult and a teenager um, it, without the parent being included in, in every text also. So um, that's not in our diocese, but it may be in yours. So make sure you check so that. Check with your diocese or your synod or your region right. or sure. your um, other organization. Okay, uh, Jamie Martin Curry says, when you send a calendar out, would that be an appropriate place to put some possibilities on the back and get feedback for interest? Or would that be totally separate? I plan on a calendar and a survey for rally day, but do you think I could do that together for a mail out? I really like the idea of bios, by the way. I think that's what I'm, from the thing that I mentioned, um, the, the sheet of paper that has a calendar on one side and the, the bios and stuff on the, on the back. Um, for me and for what I counsel churches here in Arkansas, I want that sheet to be a sheet actually that I can hand out to new visitors and new people year round. So I, anything that's on that calendar, uh, anything that's on that calendar on that sheet is definitely gonna happen. It's not something where I'm asking for people, hey, do you want to do this? Yeah, okay. like, this is good. You can count on it, put it on your Google Calendar, put it on your Apple Calendar. It is going to happen. So um, so anyway, that's what I use that sheet for. I definitely, though, I think at Rally Day is a great place to do a survey and ask if there's other things that they might want to do. But I, for me, I wouldn't add it to that sheet. I'd have that sheet be things that no matter what, I'm, someone's going to be here for that program. That's just me. I love it. And then Lucas um, asked the question about frequency. This is actually a perfect segue into our next bullet point. How many times per year should mail and or email be sent out to the entire congregation regarding youth ministry programming? What are your thoughts on weekly reminders through multiple communication platforms? I'm new to a large cathedral where there is a huge disconnect between children and youth ministries and the rest of the congregation. So let me just advance the slides here. And it says how frequently you communicate with youth, but actually Lucas's question is how frequently should you communicate with the whole congregation? And then we'll segue that into how frequently to youth. Uh, Santi, what do you think? So there's a, I always begin with two different things. So one is that I want to communicate with the entire parish um, as often as possible. And, and that doesn't only have to be through snail mail or email, but even through using your bulk and, or using other communications um, or, or media that you have in your parish. As many ways in which the parish may know that activities are happening, um, it's, it's always good. For mail outs, I do it twice a year. So once right before the fall and once right before Christmas to remind people of what's gonna happen in Christmas and then things that are coming up the next year. The second thing, or the, when it comes to frequency, I'm always mindful of you know, how many hours there are in each week. So that's 168 hours. Um, the time that teens sleep is mostly about 49. So let's say that's 120 hours a week where they're awake or conscious, you hope. <laughs> I have them for three hours each week if they come every week. That's between worship, Sunday school, and a youth group if we have one that week. That means that there's about 117 hours where they're not thinking about church. So I, I try to have communication with them, you know, at least once a day in many different ways. That's between, you know, the email that goes out on Wednesdays, between all the different posts on Instagram and the stories on Instagram and text messaging and things that they may see on Facebook or so many, many other ways to connect with them. But it's just, they're just quick reminders that church life and faith happens in, in other days and more than just Sunday. Um, and so the frequency, it's a way to invite them to think of what are the best ways for them to live their faith in daily life, uh, to practice, to be aware of events, of logistics, uh, so as often as I can, but at least once a day. All right, Randall, same dual question to you. How often would you counsel churches to do full congregational announcements about the youth ministry, and then how often to communicate with youth? 
Uh, yeah, I love what Sonny said that twice a year, uh, definitely at the, at the bare minimum, that once a year, uh, big mail out that lets everyone know why we're doing it and what we're doing. Um, I would say also, though, uh, like Lucas's question comes from, he says, I'm from a large cathedral. There, um, more than likely, I'm guessing your large cathedral has a, uh, its own Facebook page also. And we're not going to talk much about Facebook here today because the average age is uh, not, it's just not where our kids are uh, with the, uh, on Facebook. But it is very much so where their parents and grandparents are. Um, so I think it's still worth, especially if you have a, a if you're a full time or part time person, I still think it's worth to maintain a youth ministries Facebook page. Um, not again to communicate as much with your teenagers, but to uh, to let people like it and let people see that you have stuff going on there. Um, the so the general message in youth ministry lately has been communication has been to get out of Facebook. I would say still you need to be if you're if you're at a large church especially you need to still be on Facebook to let to be able to give a place where parents young adults and adults can can uh, see what's going on and know what's going on there too. Um, they can share it and be happy with it. And every now and then, probably from your main church Facebook page, they can reshare one of your posts that lets them see, hey, look, this is what the kids did this last weekend. Uh, it's a, a great way to let that whole congregation kind of year all the way around the year get to see what you're doing too. Randall, perfect segue, because I'm going to try to move this along a little bit. I want to go to this third bullet point where it says uh, follow-up communication after events, which is just in general, a really good idea. Uh, but how do you do it? How often do you do it? And what are the fruits that that bears? Uh, we'll do Randall first and then Santi on that. Uh, this is kind of a big one for me as a dialysis in person, especially. Um, this is where on my website, I will um, host a photo gallery um, on a, for past events. For me, I keep those in Google Photos and then I'll put a link up uh, to that album uh, to the, uh, at the youth event. Um, and I let the kids know these are photos that are uh, publicly or you're, you're welcome to share these photos if you want to also. Um, I will also from the diocese, of course, I will share um, photos from the event and maybe a, a video recap of the event on our uh, on our Facebook page to really let uh, parents and youth really know kind of what's going on. Um, I also another communication getting back to the snail mail stuff for um, I started about two years ago for dialysis and events actually making a, uh, a conference booklet, similar to what you would get as an adult when you went to a conference. Cool. I actually have those for my youth events now, where it gives a schedule and gives some the small group questions and even some, some songs that we're doing that weekend. I give that to every one of my youth at the youth event, and they do go home with them. Yeah. And uh, um, I now when, parent, when, when, youth, when parents ask their youth, what did you do at the youth weekend? they've got something in their hand like, oh yeah, we did this. That's awesome. And I've actually had parents talk to me about that. Like, oh my gosh, I saw y'all talked about, you know, uh, the uh, um, uh, different powers of leadership and stuff like that at the last event. Like they saw that because of the sheet I sent, the, the, the conference booklet that I give kids now. All right, Santi, same question to you. How do you do follow-up communication with youth and families after events? So I do it three different ways. One is, um, I do it through Instagram and mostly through stories. And what I do is I tell them three things. So I remind them what we told them, what happened in this event, what was the highlight of the event. Two, um, I remind them of an action point, an action item that we had during that, let's say that we were talking about um, race and reconciliation. So one item that was an invitation to have conversations with somebody who is not, uh, from an, a, a different background or, or someone, um, that you probably don't talk to on a regular basis. And then the third thing is, is a question that they might have asked themselves during that event or a question that somebody asked that helps them to ponder. Uh, and so after the event, let's say if the event was on, on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I, you know, I'll use a story to be able to share one of those three things. This is a way for them to, to be reminded of what they experienced of what happened. Um, during the event. And then through um, Instagram and then through the newsletter, I also have um, sharing images, you know, photos, and then just little snippets of um, something funny that happened, mostly video, um, because Instagram allows you to do that and, and just it works very well in that platform. I love how the segues are working out today because Giselle asked the question about Instagram and Santi just touched on it. And now we're going to this next slide, this great slide. Uh, Randall, thanks for putting this together because I know people in this webinar are like, get to the tools. What, what can I use? What's going to work? 
So um, Randall, walk us through this slide, which offers some pros and cons of three different platforms. And uh, just to point out that group text is not exactly a platform, that is the, the functionality of doing group texts on phones. Yeah, so, um, so these are, um, a group me, doc, I'm sure the one in the middle, uh, people are more familiar with, it's been around for a couple of years, group me. Um, it is a, some, you can read here, but some of the pros of it, it's cross-platform, so a person with an Android and with an iPhone device, uh, it looks the same. They can also log into it from a PC if they don't, um, that, uh, so they can, they can see it all three ways, you can manage it all three ways, it's been very helpful. Um, your, on your safeguarding side of things, your messages are saved for safety, so you can always archive and easily pull things out from there. Um, another thing on, on GroupMe, uh, it does have a photo gallery that's involved with it, and it does have some event storage, but it's not really that strong. Um, and um, as I said, put non-smartphone access, so youth who don't have smartphones, um, it, it becomes problematic with them. Uh, on the um, I'm on my right, <laughs> on the right, it does say this this one uh, area, group text. That is for people who set up, um, that is for people who set up a, uh, a, a group text inside their phone. So if I'm an iPhone user and I set up a, um, a group of uh, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 uh, youth on a, on a group text and I send that out, um, the, the youth can then converse back, they can send back messages. The problem with that becomes uh, if I'm an Android user, which I am, um, then when you add me to an iPhone group, the messages become kind of really distorted when I reply back, and also um, I can't see them and being as involved in it. Um, this like pictures and videos, so it kind of messed up, right? I'm sorry? Will pictures and videos not come over nicely sometimes? Uh, yeah, they don't come across nicely, and when I reply to the group, a lot of times my replies go back to individuals rather than to the whole group. Um, it's oh, just, everybody just groans and says, oh, it's Randall Curtis with the Android. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and at least here in, in Arkansas, I'll say, um, the Episcopal, or it seems like most Episcopal youth have iPhones. Um, but uh, there are a, a minority of us out here, uh, me being one, who doesn't. <laughs> and so uh, my daughter's one too, and it's hard for her to get involved in those iPhone groups, which is All a right. plus as a parent for me. Um, Randall, let me let you take a breath. Uh, yeah. Santi, tell us about the pros and cons of Instagram, and then Randall, you're going to tell us about band. So I think one of the issues is that now the average youth uh, spends about nine hours staring at their phone on social media. Obviously, Instagram is a big part of that between Instagram and Snapchat. But one of the things that is very helpful uh, beyond some of the other problems that there may be in the usage of Instagram and Snapchat is that uh, because it's image-based, it's something that is helpful in terms of them leading to um, uh, an understanding of the world, you know, images are easier for them to, to remember and to connect to than, than words. And two, that Instagram now for the last year has had the feature for um, stories. And so beyond the images that you're sharing um, through your feed, that you're able to use stories in a creative way to share, um, you know, aspects about, you know, what's coming up next, events, um, quotes that you want them to think about or questions. And so in as many ways as you can to just hit them on an almost daily basis with, with images and with words and with even emojis that will help them to think or to stay with uh, the theme that you're working on for that week or for that month. Um, and Instagram has a lot of many different um, ways to engage with youth um, and I just find it very helpful. Santi, what about you know, the messaging, direct messaging on Instagram? Would you use that or not? Uh, I have used it seldom. Every once in a while, if I'm asking a youth um, a very specific question about a, um, a photo. So one of the things that I do is that social media is, it's, it's the most important part of it is that it's social. So beyond using Instagram for me to post something uh, and so the youth can look at it, I'm also involved in their lives because they're posting about events that are happening in school. They're posting um, about, you know, the next uh, play or sports. And if I congratulate them, if I tell them, hey, I'm praying for you, and as they post something about a test or something else, you know, Instagram is another way for me to be part of their life and to remind them that there is at least one adult or somebody else from their church that is with them, praying with them, and who is part of their lives. 
Uh, so to remember that Instagram is not just so that I can share something, but also so that I can be yeah. part of their lives in, in a new way. Okay, so Jamie Martin Curry and Randall, you can jump in on this as well. Private messages on Facebook or Instagram are trackable, but they're also deletable. So, but it's not deletable for you. How does that work, Randall? Um, as I understand, at least on, I don't use the, I, I don't use Instagram private messages very often, but on Facebook private messages, um, they can delete their side, but um, I've got that archive of my side, I guess. Um, is what I would say. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of, of where I would go with that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Lucas says, do you use personal Instagram account or a youth ministry church account? And that'd be the same question for Facebook or really any of these platforms. Um, for Instagram, I mean, for Instagram, we have, I have an, an Instagram EYC Arkansas, so a youth account. And then I have a separate uh, account just for, uh, um, for myself. Uh, and they, they've made that easy to do, to add and switch accounts to. For Facebook, um, I mean, that's, you have your own personal profile, and uh, um, I don't have, some people keep a separate work profile, but I don't keep a separate, I set up groups or pages instead. All right, I'm going fast here, but Santi, same question. Do you do a personal Instagram account or like a churchy minister account? Uh, church account, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I do not befriend anyone on Facebook or Instagram with my private account. If they ask me to be friended, I talk to them and um, I make sure that the parents know that they're going to follow me. None of the youth follow me on Facebook uh, and a few of them follow me on um, Instagram. So, which is okay. All right, uh, Randall, tell us about this because a lot of people don't know about Band. So give us like the two minute uh, rundown on Band. Sure, so Band is this really cool the group that we're actually switching to. We used it for the Episcopal Youth Event this year and our kids really jumped into it. Um, it is a separate app, um, but it's kind of like having your own uh, social network just for your group. Um, so it gives you the ability to have, I mentioned earlier that the events and photo gallery isn't strong in um, GroupMe. It is very strong in this. Uh, and so the, the trick is you do have to get your youth to, uh, to download the app, to join into it. But that was really easy for us, at least at the Episcopal Youth event and for um, other events we're doing it with. And then you can see as from this screen here, you can see, um, you can set up multiple bands. So I've got one for EYE, uh, EYE Arkansas, our group that went, but I have a band for um, the Arkansas Youth Ministers. And I'll actually set up a band for, um, I've got one set up right now, but I'll put that link somewhere that we can send it out for uh, Communicating with Families webinar so people can see what it does. But inside band, I've got the ability to set up kind of a, uh, that, well, it's set up as a kind of like a Facebook news feed, like a Facebook wall, but it's just private to my groups who join. They can join also from any device, from Android, from uh, an iPhone device, it looks the same on both devices. They can also be on it with no device whatsoever. They can get on to, well, I say no device whatsoever, no mobile device. <laughs> <laughs> someday, <laughs> they can get on, someday. <laughs> they can get onto it easily from a PC or Mac, um, and it's just totally free to use. Uh, parents could join in, you could easily set up, uh, and then you can see right here on the right, um, that is a, two separate chats in sideband. So I can have one chat of a group that's just my adults group. Um, but then I can also have a chat group for the youth to be a part of. And if I want to set up inside a band, if I was using a church, I would have one uh, big group band, one group group. And then inside that, I would have a special group chat set up for junior high youth and a, one set up for senior high youth, um, where they could also, if they wanted to chat with just those groups there too. So, so it's kind of like having your own free personal social or your own free group social network. Yeah, I was just going to say, and it makes it easier on the minister side. Is that right? It is, yeah. And it, that you can log on to it and completely manipulate and use it from the, uh, from the side of, from a PC or from a yeah, Mac. That's nice. Um, so when you're at work. Yeah, when you're at work, you can do that. You can also set up your full calendar in it. So people can literally for every, I mean, you could put on there every Sunday night when we're going to have youth group, uh, 5.30 to 7. And then people can check in. And say, oh yeah, I'm going to come to that. I'm going to come to nice. that. And I'll get a notification and tell them to remind them of that, or really for nice. events. So it's really, it, it's just a, it's a pretty brand. I, I don't know how new. It's pretty new service, and uh, we're really liking it. We're going to set up a band for all the dioceses, uh, and then uh, for youth ministries, and then uh, um, go through there. So yeah, we're really enjoying it. All right. Well, there's your pitch for Band yeah. US, and we're really thankful for that. We're going to our lightning round, which I've been excited about which is to ask uh, Santi first and then Randall, 
when you are communicating with youth, whether it is snail mail, whether it is email, whether it is a group text, whether it is an Instagram, what words or phrases or invitations get the Holy Spirit moving and get uh, youth to respond positively? And then on the other side, what words or phrases will fall flat? So, Santi, do the positive one first. I think one thing that really works um, with them is food. I mean, anytime I tell them that food is involved, it just uh, they tell them that we're going to have something to eat. And also, um, just to remind them of uh, what's what's the theme. Um, I think that they like knowing that there's a theme, especially if they have to dress up. If they have, there's a creative aspect to the the meeting that is much more than just we're coming to sit down to listen. All right, Randall. Positive uh, phrases, invitations that work. Go. Um, I'm all about humor, so I'm going to try to do an image. Uh, someone, and I'll answer a question from the the panel, the chat on this too. Um, I use Canva.com. I'll try to put up a really funny image, either of myself or of one of the other groups, and uh, put that inside my uh, invitation. So, and that will, uh, uh, I think that will always get people that are, they're real excited. Especially, they seem to like it whenever I make a funny. Uh, like I'll put like a caption to a photo or I'll put a, a speak bubble in a photo of one of them who are at one of the events. They nice. love that. That draws them in. All right. Santi on the other side, words or phrases and invitations that will fall flat. Yeah. You know, for a while I was asking you to come to and let them know that at the end of the event would have faith sharing and they, <laughs> no, I don't want that. and so one, the Mexican accent, and two, it's the whole faith sharing thing, which is not something. Not <laughs> good. Good. Good, good, good. But incidentally, they are going to come, and there's going to be faith sharing. You just don't have to uh, tell it's, them that way. There's a different name for it now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Randall. Words or phrases that fall flat. Um, uh, you know, I, I I try to stay away from my uh, my teenage colloquialisms, my awesomes, and my, the things that I, that I said, you know, I, I try to stay away from uh, phrases that were out of style about 10 years ago. So yeah. um, that's, th that I find that they just groan at me and I don't feel like it's helpful anymore. The, the one for me that I w was thinking about when I made this slide was the um, lamenting poor attendance. It's like, oh, sure. oh, last year we only had five people come on this thing. So I'm hoping to get a few more this year. Right. As like, I know we can fall into that trap sometimes. Yeah, I did say also Canva. Uh, Canva.com. Uh, it is a free web service where you can do all kinds of. I'm sorry, I'm answering a question from the group the chat. To no, you're, you're right on. You're right on target. Go for it. Okay. Um, I did say uh, Canva.com. It is, uh, and many people can attest to it. Probably even in the chat room, it is the most amazing uh, graphic web uh, maker in the world. Uh, it makes you, I've been using it for years now, and uh, it uh, it makes you look like you know what you're doing when it comes to graphic design. If you want to read a review about that, you can go over to Building Faith, and we've got a little <laughs> review on Canva. Sure. Uh, final questions, and then we are going to end this thing right on time at 3 o'clock, which was um, Snapchat. Uh, I would refer you back to a previous uh, webinar that Randall did about Snapchat and the church. Um, but overall, Randall, thumbs up or thumbs down on Snapchat for youth ministry? For me, I'm a thumbs down on Snapchat. Um, I, 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 and I really tried, I, for years I just said thumbs down because it was such an anonymous service and I felt like safeguarding principles were just, just wouldn't let us do it. So, but then this last summer I tried to get involved a little bit in it and say like, okay, give it a chance. And I just, personally, I just feel like it's not an effective form of group communication that there are other things out there that we can use. And so this, for me, this isn't something we should get involved in. We can also see yep. that the user base is dropping pretty fast now. Got it. Um, and the, I mean, the stock market, it's, 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 it's falling pretty fast. So I think we're, 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 we're done with it, I think. Fair enough. Uh, Santi, have you ever heard of Hootsuite? I have. And would you recommend using something like that? Yeah, Hootsuite works. I mean, it all so depends on what you're using it for. I mean, a lot of people use it for, for links and for um, scheduling posts and things of the sort. And I think that um, uh, Hootsuite works in terms of posting, but I think that what people are attracted to is something that feels much more organic. So depending on how you use it, it might help you or it might not. Mm -hmm. um, you guys, we did it. It's three o'clock. We have answered all our questions. 
We have learned a ton. I'm so grateful for both of you for taking the time to share all this wisdom. I mean, between the two of you, there's a collective wisdom of many years sharing all this. We are going to close up. Um, so before I read this closing prayer, let me have each of you uh, say goodbye and sign off because then when I, I read the, the closing thing, that'll be, that'll be the end of our webinar. Thank you to all of our amazing viewers for signing on. A uh, reminder that this will all be shared through Building Faith. You can watch the video recording, send it to somebody else, and um, see all the slides as well. So guys, sign off, and then I'll close this up. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. Hasta luego. And if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to email. Absolutely. Yeah, look for me. Um, you can also find me at theholygeek.com. Uh, it's a very inactive blog that I keep, <laughs> but, uh, um, but uh, yeah, definitely find me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm, I'm always around. Let us close with this inspiration from scripture. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. Thank you all for joining us. This has been Wisdom from the Field webinar brought to you by the Center for the Ministry of Teaching at Virginia Theological Seminary. God bless.